Hello everybody, <laughs> it's Whisper Audios, and welcome back to another monthly favourites video. This is September 2022, and I'll be doing this one in a soft spoken voice. You know I like to alternate between whispering and soft speaking because I know a lot of you out there like one or the other or both so I like to keep it kind of varied for everyone to enjoy. So if you haven't caught up with this year's monthly favourites then I encourage you to check out the link in the description box. I've made a little handy playlist for you to catch up with all the months so far. So we're going to jump right into my favourite song. Now, this song I actually heard on the radio. <laughs> like, I don't listen to the radio a lot at all. Um, even when I'm like driving my car, I much prefer like the sound of silence. <laughs> like, I know that's really terrible and I know it's like really boring for some people not to have the radio playing in their car. But I'm just one of these people that just prefer the sound of silence like when I'm really concentrating because I find it's really, really distracting for me. So um, I don't know why I thought to put the radio on, but I tuned into my local um, radio station and they were playing this song. And I was like, oh my goodness, this song is so good. I'm really, really enjoying it. I had to like pull over and like shazam it or whatever it is where you like um hold your phone up and it recognizes like the music that's playing because I'm always really really bad at remembering what people say <laughs> so even if the presenter said like oh it's so and so by so and so it would just go out of my head in the next two seconds so I like to like shazam it on my phone and then I take a screen grab of it and then I know I've saved it. So luckily I did it for this. And the song is kind of like really new synthwave. It has like an 80s dreamy feel to it. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, yes, I love this song. It's going in my playlist. So the artist is Sophie Royer. And the song is called... Baker Miller Pink. Now I won't play it for you, but you can, I'll put the link into the description where you can listen to it on YouTube. I think it's really, really beautiful song and just captures that sort of elegant, dreamy, whimsical kind of 80s synthwave kind of feel, which I'm all about. So please do check it out. It's a really, really great song. Next, we move on to my favourite TV show or film for the month. And I briefly talked about this last month, and that's Better Call Saul. <laughs> I finally, finally finished watching it. You know, I don't like to binge watch uh, TV shows, so I've been watching one a day, like, on and off for a few weeks now. So I finally got around to finish watching it and oh my god, I was totally, totally blown away. Like, I won't spoil anything for anyone who hasn't watched it, but I really, not that I didn't expect the ending, but I didn't want the ending to come in that way even though it was like inevitable, uh, much like the Walter White storyline in Breaking Bad, it kind of naturally ends up that way and it couldn't end any different. So Better Call Saul, for people who aren't familiar with the TV show, is kind of like a prequel slash sequel to Breaking Bad and it follows the life of of Saul Goodman, aka Jimmy McGill, um, the notorious criminal lawyer. So we see him 
basically start off as um, like a fledgling lawyer under the shadow of his brother, who is a really, really top-notch lawyer. But he's kind of got his own issues right now, and Jimmy kind of looks after him and does what he can as the younger brother. But that relationship kind of spirals out of control, and one thing leads to another, and uh, Jimmy sort of sets up on his own, meets his, like, partner, girlfriend, uh, Kim Wexler, who also is a badass lawyer too, and they kind of start a relationship, but they soon kind of realise that although they love each other, they're pretty toxic for each other as well, which I really love that shift of their relationship, because they're not overly, like, kissy cuddly or like overly romantic with each other it's kind of like very it almost seems like platonic at first but they care about each other and they love each other deeply which I loved so then we kind of see flash forwards in black and white of Saul on the run from the law if you haven't seen Breaking Bad I'm sorry spoilers <laughs> can't avoid them. So we see Saul on the run in hiding from the law and we kind of see what he gets up to post Breaking Bad and that's really interesting because he's just this weedy Cinnabon Ned Flanders-esque <laughs> guy like working at Cinnabon um, and he's like going through like the motions and you see his really pathetic life but their old kind of habits start to creep up again and, you know, he gets into trouble. We also see characters that we know and love from Breaking Bad. We see um, Gustavo Fring, we see Hank and we see, um, we do see Walt and Jesse and oh, Hector Salamanca. We literally see pretty much everyone. So I was really surprised that they went to that length to try and get everybody into Better Call Saul and I think it kind of fitted all right. Some of the flashbacks with Walt and Jesse I feel weren't needed because in my mind Walter White is this enigma. He is this like you know Al Capone like gangster like <laughs> he's like this unspeakable entity which like you can't emanate that again and I feel like if we left him out of Better Call Saul he would have remained this enigma his his legacy would have like lived on we kind of didn't really need to see him if you know what I mean and the same goes for Jesse it was nice to see them again but obviously they've aged and it kind of took me out of it because I knew that they were just there for like the day that they were needed. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was quite nice to see them all there as well. Um, but really for me, it was all the different dynamics between the characters. The editing was sublime. It was really true to Better Calls. Um, it was really true to Breaking Bad in the way that the episode starts with a like WTF moment and you kind of think what is this what am I looking at how is the rest of the episode going to end up here and Better Call Saul was pretty much like that especially for the last season it's just amazing it was really great I found that the first couple of seasons were a real drag to kind of get into it but sort of like the midway point onwards, we really like ramped up the tension as we were going into like the Breaking Bad storylines and kind of merging into that timeline. So if you just stay with it and are patient with it, then it pays off massively at the end. Um, and it was just phenomenal. Chef's kiss. <laughs> so now we move on to my favorite ASMR artist for this month and I'm smiling like a fool because this ASMR artist is so pure and so lovely. <laughs> she really, every time I think about her, she 
just really makes me feel warm and cozy inside. Like her content is so beautiful and so honest and just so super tingly as well. And she's actually messaged me a few times saying how much she loves my channel as well. And I'm like, girl, really? <laughs> Your channel's amazing, so I really, really hope you guys like her too and check her out because she is so lovely. So the channel in question is called Jenny B ASMR, and I'm going to play you one of uh, her videos. Today's video is twofold. One, it's going to be a little bit of an update about what's been going on. Isn't she just the best? Like, I don't know about you guys, but as soon as she comes on screen and she has that gorgeous, like, Hollywood smile, it just makes me melt inside. And I want to listen to her just speak for hours. And honestly, I do, because her videos are just so uncomplicated. They're straight to the point. You don't have to figure anything out. It's like you're spending time with one of your relatives that you really love and adore and I think that she captures that love so well and honestly like I wish I lived closer to her because I'd be around her house all the time <laughs> just listening to her speak and I really love all the different triggers that she does especially the magazine flipping through that's one of my favorite triggers somebody like flipping through a magazine and really just at their leisure saying what they like about what's on the page so please 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 go and check out Jenny B ASMR because I know she would love to see you guys there and uh, leave a comment on her videos too so now we move on to my favourite thing for this month, and it's a bag. This is a little sort of side body satchel thing from Gaston Luger, and these guys sent me one of their bags many, many years ago, and I did a little Instagram story for those guys, um, which may still also be on my stories. I believe I left it up there, so you can go check it out. And they sent me a black backpack, which I use every single day. I swear, that backpack, I don't go out the house without that backpack on, because it just has enough room for all of my stuff. Plus, like, if I go out shopping or anything like that, it's got enough room to put extra stuff in and it's not that big and it's not that heavy and it just looks so good i really love it and the guys sent me another one <laughs> this one in fact is a little bit smaller but in my head it's for like traveling airplane if you're going on a short trip somewhere or if you're just popping to the shops and this is is amazing so it has so many different compartments you've got a compartment at the front you've got a zip compartment at the front you've got a big main zipper at the back with a little zipper in the inside too you've also got a kind of secret pouch at the back for like cards and things like that you've also got this little drawstring thing here so you can like make this tighter or close it up you've also got this little like um fabric hook thing here which i've attached like this um 
pulley thing. So I put my keys on this and I know I can just get them out like that instead of like just putting them in my bag and then they might fall out. So my keys go in on this little um, tab thing here and then they just go inside the bag like that. I mean, you've got so much room for all sorts of things. I keep <laughs> my umbrella in here. I keep little um, hand wipes. I keep my purse. I mean, you can keep like a first aid kit in here. You can keep like a travel book in here, your passport, all your like uh, documents at the back here. It's just so much room for a little bag. It's quite impressive. You've also got like these hooks here with like adjustable straps. So you could just take that off if you wanted to just hold it. But I don't see why you would because it's so much easier with uh, the strap attached. And the strap is really durable, really comfortable on your shoulder. And you can like uh, lift it up and down depending on like your height and your preference. I kind of like it having having it like sitting on my hip like this so I can reach in and grab stuff really really easily. So I love this bag. <laughs> like as much as I love my backpack sometimes I don't need all of that room especially if I'm literally just popping to the shop. Especially now I don't really have a purse because I use like Apple Pay and my watch to pay for stuff. But this is great for like, um, we went uh, for a little walk with Miko and I didn't want to take all of my stuff with me because it's just like, I don't need it. I don't need to take so much stuff on dog walk. So I literally just took the dog first aid kit, my first aid kit, the human first aid kit, umbrella, um, rain mac, I took my phone, I took the battery pack which is quite a hefty thing, it's like this big, I took the car keys and I took my collapsible water bottle as well which fits perfectly in here and literally I still had room for more so this backpack is so great for people who are like pretty practical but also want to be well prepared <laughs> like me. Um, and it's just really, really brilliant. Sorry, my adjectives are really terrible today. <laughs> but it's very, very well made. It's really durable. Um, my backpack that I got a couple of years ago still looks like brand new. And I wear it, I use it every day. So that's my favourite thing for this month. And again, I'll put a link down in the description where you can buy this. So now we move on to my favourite cosmetic and it's one that I've used before but I don't believe I've ever spoken about it on monthly favourites. I'm not sure, maybe I have. But in any case, I'm talking about it again because it's so great. So the cosmetic in question are these Aromatherapy Associates shower oils. You can see I'm nearly over halfway through this one. This one's called Deep Relax. Deep Relax. And I actually was gifted this by a lovely viewer from my wish list. <laughs> and actually I had a couple of them on there and various people have gifted them to me. So thank you so much to all of those of you who have. I'm making my way through them. I don't like to mix and match them. I like to just focus on one, get to the end and then open a new one. But this one is called Deep Relax and I'm not sure what the notes are. Oh, it does say uh, Vetivert, Chamomile and sandalwood and it's a really deep like musky but kind of florally scent and what you do with these is you 
put a fairly like healthy amount in your hand you rub your hands together you cup your nose and you take a nice deep breath in whilst you're in the shower by the way that's like the most important bit <laughs> these work perfectly in the shower because the steam helps to kind of like um, diffuse all the aromas around you so lovely and then what you do after you've like inhaled is you kind of rub it all around your neck, your shoulders, wherever you like and as the hot water kind of falls on you the uh, aroma sort of steams all around you and it's really lovely and very relaxing so I did this this morning as I do every morning and it just stays with you all day and as you sort of breathe in you can kind of just faintly smell it on your skin and it's almost like you're in relaxation like olfactory <laughs> relaxation all day which is really lovely so I think the other two I think a muscle relax and forest now the forest one is my favorite I actually got that for my birthday maybe three years ago and I put it on my wish list and as I ran out and somebody bought it for me so I'm really excited to use that one because that one literally smells like you are walking through a pine forest the freshest most vibrant pine forest you can ever imagine and that is just so gorgeous but these uh, ones are, are really good for like if you have a shower before you go to bed um, or really what I've done before is actually use it as perfume <laughs> because it's so versatile and it's not that overpowering what I've done in the past is taken a little bit on my finger and literally just put it on my neck and on my wrist and because it's like oil based it doesn't have that kind of stingy um alcoholy kind of um like smell to it like normal eau de parfum and parf perfumes do which i don't really like it's a bit strong for me but this oil based it just melts into your skin and just so relaxing the smell of it so that's my favorite cosmetic for this month and um, I'll actually uh, put down in the description all three of the scents that I have they're by far my favorite ones but they do so many different ones if you're more of like a, a menthol kind of person who like minty sort of things they do one for that um, they also do ones which are like limited edition, like the forest one. Um, so there's something for everyone, I'm sure. So lastly, my favourite book for this month. Now, you'll be shocked to know that I haven't actually read this book before. I've read books by the, other books by this author in the past. But lately, I reread one of her books. I was really put off by, uh, not, not by the writing itself, but by some of the themes which are expressed, which I understand from a historical point of view are accurate, but for a modern day reader who's particularly sensitive to those things, it wasn't my cup of tea and I kind of took a different spin on this particular author and it kind of put a bit of a bad taste in my mouth and that author is Anne Rice now I read Blood and Gold when I was about 14 and I really loved that book um, I didn't see anything wrong with it um, I was obviously very young and naive so I didn't really understand some of the uh, things that were being described but reading it that again as an adult some of the interactions between 
obviously these vampires and younger, shall we say, people um, really made me feel uncomfortable and I didn't enjoy reading it. So I actually abandoned reading uh, Blood and Gold again. I tried to read uh, another one of hers, but again, it was all very much the same and I couldn't get through it again. So I felt really, really sad that one of my childhood, like, hero authors had now been kind of tarnished by my adult brain and adult sensibilities. So I was like, hmm, what do I do about this? Because I really want to like her stuff again. And then I realised that I hadn't actually read her most fav famous book, which is Interview with a Vampire. Of all the books I've read of Anne Rice, I actually have not read this book. And I felt really, really stupid um, that it had kind of gone in a weird order for her, like, work. So I bought this and I read it because the TV show, I think it's HBO, the TV show is coming out. And I was like, I kind of need to read the book before I start watching that TV show to kind of give it credibility and uh, sort of bounce it off the book and see how accurate it is because the, the TV show looks freaking awesome. <laughs> so I bought this book and I really, really loved it. Like, I inhaled it. Um, <laughs> I It literally just took me may maybe like a week and a half to read because I was so engrossed in it. Now, I love, love the film starring Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise that's like, it is one of my favourite films in the world because it's just so well made. It takes you on a journey and it explores so many different themes which are pretty taboo still in this sort of day and age. And I thought that the book was a very good testament to the film. Um, obviously they took out certain bits which didn't work which I'm really excited to see if they put into the TV show but I really really loved it I loved all the characters I loved the setting I loved all the sort of character interactions with each other like vampires are so dramatic and so flamboyant and so over the top they're so drama like they're so extra <laughs> you know what I mean and I really loved that about them everything's just so oh TT all the time and the themes which I wasn't so sure on in Anne Rice's like other stuff weren't all that all there like it it was really really toned down I think we had like maybe one or two scenes which kind of loosely trod on that sort of icky area for me but I could get over it but I really enjoyed, like, um, the dynamic between the three, like, Lestat, Louis, and Claudia. I thought that their dynamic was truly wonderful because it goes beyond, like, parent-child. It's It goes beyond that and you really get lost in the emotions that they kind of have for one another and the betrayal and the hurt and all of that. So I really loved this book and it gave me my love of Ram Rice back, but I will have to sort of tread lightly with her other material when I'm rereading it again, because, uh, yeah, like I say, it's not for everyone, but this one I think might be. So that brings us to the end of September 2022's monthly favourites. <laughs> again, I will link, as always, everything I've spoken about down in the description so you can check it out for yourself. But please let me know if you've like read the book, if you like the ASM artist, if you have any other recommendations for me, please let me know. I always, always check out your recommendations. So thank you so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care.